How much of the book really is autobiographical? Well, let's see. I did have a child with a guy that forgot to tell me he was gay and I forgot to notice, I think. <laughs> um, and I was in a mental hospital. Carrie Fisher's new novel, The Best Awful, is a thinly fictionalized account of how Hollywood talent agent Brian Lord, the father of her real-life daughter, left her for another man, and of her battle with mental illness. You probably are the only person in the world who could make going off on a sort of a manic depressive swing and ending up in a mental institution funny? It better be funny. Otherwise, uh, that, what, what I say is if my life wasn't funny, it would just be true, and that's unacceptable. <laughs> and it, if the truth know, sometimes is, hurts, well, sort of, 47-year-old um, Fisher you know, is not one it's, to it's, shrink it's, from it. Both my parents together, I think, have been married about eight times or something. I don't have good role models, so it's their fault. Everything is their fault. <laughs> A radiant bride and a handsome groom, Debbie and Eddie are finally Mr. and Mrs. Debbie and Eddie, of course, are Carrie's parents. Movie star Debbie Reynolds and crooner Eddie Fisher. In the 1950s, they like were America's fun, sweethearts. Debbie, Your eyes are the eyes of a woman in love. Then, America's scandal, when Eddie away. left Debbie for bombshell Elizabeth Taylor. Carrie was just a toddler. You've always been used to being in the spotlight. Right. And have you enjoyed it? It's been terrific, <laughs> just a round of fun over and over again. It's something that you get used to. Um, it's not a choice I made. Carrie did choose to enter the family business, first in her mother's nightclub act, then in Hollywood. She made her film debut at 17. You know, I think you got exactly the same eyes as your mother. Playing a rebellious teenager who had a fling with Warren Beatty in Shampoo. No, no, and my eyes they're are with, with her either. They are. No, they're not. They no, they're not. They're not. They're I, really I'm not going to like my mother. Two years later, she nabbed her most famous role. This is not rescue. You came in here, didn't you have a plan for getting out? Please, please. Icy Princess Leia in Star Wars. What the hell are you doing? Somebody has to save our skins. The celebrity that came with Star Wars was overwhelming, as she told close friend Tracy Ullman before a Los Angeles audience last month. You've been merchandised up the wazoo, haven't you? I don't own my um, image. Isn't that incredible? She doesn't know yeah, that. every time I look in the mirror, I have to send George Lucas a couple of bucks. <laughs> <laughs> she continued her acting career, playing John Belushi's girlfriend in The Blues Brothers. And she won praise as Meg Ryan's pal in When Harry Met Sally. He just spent $120 on a new nightgown for his wife. I don't think he's ever going to leave her. No one thinks he's ever going to leave her. But it was writing that really became her passion. Everything worked out very well in books much more organized and ordered than everything out here. She's written four novels. In fact, her current book is a sequel to her first, the semi-autobiographical Postcards from the Edge, published in 1987. That was about drug abuse, rehab, and the relationship with a larger-than-life mother. It became a bestseller and a hit movie with Meryl Streep and Shirley MacLaine. Carrie wrote the screenplay. Remember my 17th birthday party when you lifted your skirt up in front of all those I people? I did not lift including my that guy skirt. Michael. It twirled up! And you weren't wearing any underwear. Well, look, look. And if you were look, thinking, well, look, that's a bit over the look, top, look. You haven't seen look, Carrie and Debbie look, together. Look. I just came up to clean the fountain. <laughs> Mother and daughter are close. These days, very close. What did you think when your mother said, oh, by the way, honey, I'm buying the house down the driveway from you? I tried to litigate. <laughs> she called me about the house. She said, mother, the man just died down the, down, uh, and I said, should I go to the funeral? She said, no, you should buy the house. 
The two so share I, more I, I than the common the driveway. The reason she can write so many books is because of me. Uh -huh. Because you have given her so much material? Mm -hmm. And she continue is to great do so. for material. She mm -hmm. told me something that I think would be shocking to most Americans, and that is that you and Elizabeth Taylor are actually kind of friends. Well, I think you should be after 50-some years. Goodness. And you don't, you have no bitter feelings to her, the <coughs> no. woman who took your man? No, she was just as dumb as I was, so <laughs> fall in line. We have Connie Stevens the there. The road <laughs> gets tougher. There, that's I why I, That's why I moved closer. Carrie has forgiven Elizabeth Taylor, too. The best thing Elizabeth Taylor did for me was to get Eddie Fisher out of our house. She presented her with an award for AIDS activism a while back. My stepmother, Elizabeth Taylor. In fact, Carrie has survived in Hollywood because she is both a star here and an astute observer, especially of herself. I'm a spy in the house of me. But, There's um, nothing in her life no, that seems to be off I limits. I say that I have a mental illness that is infectious, and I have exposed most of you this evening, so I advise you to see your doctors. <laughs> um, I got it from Anna Nicole Smith's toilet seat. <laughs> <laughs> Fisher's psychotic break came in 1997. She spent weeks in a mental hospital, then five months of outpatient care. She's still on medication. It took her years to find humor in her illness, to work through the pain, and write her new book. Why is the book called The Best Awful? Uh, because uh, in, in the manic high, uh, with manic depression, the mania is the best awful there is. Because? because mania is a... Well, look, uh, the, the symptoms are um, spending sprees, sexual promiscuity. I didn't get that one, <laughs> Mom. Uh, spending sprees, sexual promiscuity, uh, let's see, a, a lot of talking, uh, drug use. It just sounds to me like a really fun weekend in Vegas. Her wit and wits have earned Fisher a devoted fan base. Folks who admire her novels her movie roles, and her work as a Hollywood script doctor on films like Sister Act and The Wedding Singer. What's a script doctor? I don't know, but it's not anything I can get a triplicate pad for. And, uh. <laughs> First thing I remember when you came into my life. Even her backyard can make you grin. Festooned with stuff she's accumulated over the years, including a statue from her former husband singer-songwriter Paul Simon. Their 1983 marriage lasted less than a year. Would you ever like to get married again? I, you know the, the, the saying that you find someone when you stop looking? Or how about this? No, you don't. Um, <laughs> that's my wisdom for today. You don't. Do you still do some acting yourself now? Just around the house. <laughs> Action yeah, with occasional direction from her number one fan. We're also pretending that my mother isn't behind the camera we are directing. Pretending that she's not bossing everyone around here. And making Without me, okay. life would be just awful. Go, go, go. Thing. Go, go. Um, For now, Carrie Fisher seems to have found her role as a daughter, a mother, and a writer, melding the facts of her life with the fiction of her imagination. I like having the option of making up stuff and, and, you know, making it go a certain way. Life doesn't fall out like an entertainment. It really doesn't. And I like being able to make it go the way that I want. Since I haven't been able to do that in my actual life, please let me do it in the way that I write. What I figured out is I don't have to turn into my mother if she lives next door. Oh, you do. oh. That's a good plan. Doesn't it just happen overnight? No. It did when you were born.